Greetings, this is Charles Darwin, and once again I'm in the bed of the Paluxy River in Dinosaur Valley State Park in Texas. And as you saw in an earlier video, there's some really good dinosaur footprints here. To the left, there's a three-toed dinosaur footprint, Acrocanthosaurus. To the right, there's one of the large sauropod dinosaur footprints, which is produced by one of those huge plant-eating dinosaurs. And then over here, oh, what's this? There's a man who's actually trying to get all of the water out of the riverbed. Now, who would be doing that? He must be an ichnologist. An ichnologist is someone who studies animal tracks fossil animal tracks. Why, it's Glenn Kuban. Yes, he's one of the world experts on the dinosaur tracks of the Paluxy River bed. Well, hello, Glenn. Hi. Well, um, what can you learn about uh, the dinosaurs by looking at their tracks? Well, you can learn an awful lot about their behavior and their postures and how they moved, things that are hard to glean from their bones alone. For example, there's Hundreds of trackways in the Paluxy alone and many others in other areas, other states, other countries. And none of them, at least from the Cretaceous times onward, show any tail drags. So we know they, they carry their tails above the ground. They all also have their feet placed close together underneath them, so we know they walked in a very efficient gait. Oh, so that, that's really interesting, because these tails could weigh a ton, perhaps. Yeah, the and yet they didn't drag them. Exactly. Uh, Brontosaur-like dinosaurs, you would think they'd be dragging their tails, but... They apparently carry them above the ground. Because if they did drag their tails, you would see the marks in exactly. this mud. Exactly. Oh, okay. And also, you use the word behavior. That's really interesting. What can you learn about the behavior of dinosaurs? Uh, I see that uh, there's the three-toed, medium-sized carnivorous dinosaurs, and then the large tracks of the large herbivorous dinosaurs uh, here. And there's something interesting that uh, you can learn about the uh, large herbivorous dinosaurs. Can right. you maybe the, show uh, me some of their tracks here? Four-footed uh, brontosaur-like tracks, uh, at least in the Paluxy Riverbed, most of them are heading south, and they're walking together, so they apparently were traveling in a herd, possibly migrating. And um, the theropod tracks, the three-toed uh, tracks of meat-eating dinosaurs, in this case, Acrocanthosaurus, they tend to just go in random directions. Um, some of them may have been chasing the sauropods, uh, hunting, but others may have just been coming down to forage for food in the shallow water, the mud, because uh, this was the edge of the ocean 110 right, million right. years ago. It was ago. actually uh, the ancient uh, Gulf of Mexico that came inland farther, a uh, large shallow sea, and maybe when the tide went out or other conditions, it would expose vast areas of mud. And the dinosaurs would come down and walk through it. Maybe looking for seafood of some kind. Exactly. The, the theropods may have had a seafood buffet, clams and, and uh, snails and uh, shrimp and fish, and who knows what they were catching in the, in the shallow water and mud. Wow, that's really interesting. Um, you also uh, mentioned that by measuring the distance between some of the footprints, the three-toed dinosaurs, the Acrocanthosaurus, uh, that in one site it appeared that they were moving up to 30 miles an hour. Yeah, that's unusual. In most cases, they're just walking along at a leisurely pace. But in some cases, we see very long uh, paces between the steps. And there's a formula that other scientists have uh, figured out, uh, estimates the speed of the dinosaur based on the foot size and the size of the dinosaur using modern uh, animals as counterparts. And it turns out that, yeah, they're running up to 25, 30 miles an hour in some cases, and that's, that's in soft mud. So they probably could run even faster on firm ground, and that's much faster than some paleontologists uh, used to believe they could run. Uh, and um, even though this wasn't, uh, the animals here are usually uh, not full grown, maybe half to two thirds grown, and we're not sure why the younger and smaller ones tended to come down here. But if the younger ones could, could travel that fast, it's likely the big ones could probably travel nearly that fast. So this shows us uh, from these uh, trackways, not just the footprints, but the trackways, the dinosaurs were not like big sluggish lizards. They were actually very active, like birds, actually. Right. We the don't know how fast the sauropods can move. They, they were uh, extremely large, some of them, and they were walking on four legs. And like an elephant, they probably could have best trot. But we know that the two-legged uh, meat eaters, the theropods, could, could run at times. So wow. they were probably not just scavengers, as some proposed, but at least uh, some of the time they were, they were apparently predators. There'd be so no other reason to run fast. They walked slowly most of the time, but they could run if they needed to. Exactly. Okay, that's really interesting. Well, uh, there's a lot of things. Can you maybe show us a trackway here? Right. If you, okay. you might want to come this way, because from that angle you can't see the toes. Okay. I'm sorry I'm interrupting you, but... I'm no, that's fine. 
it's from, I can highlight it. When you look in the same direction that the dentifrice are moving, it's much easier to see uh, the details and in, in the toe marks. Here we see both sauropod tracks and theropod tracks. This is the back foot of a sauropod, brontosaur-like dinosaur. They had three large claws and two smaller blunter claws on their rear feet. The claw would go in here, here, and here, and then be two smaller ones. This is a front footprint. This is a theropod track. And over here we see even a better example of the claws impressing, and they usually angle out. And uh, they kind of look like large bear tracks, the rear feet or pez prints. And then this is one of the best examples of a front footprint. You see the complete print, and it had five blunt digits. It looks somewhat like an elephant track, but elephants had their digits all uh, around the front of the, I mean, uh, around the front of the track, whereas the sauropods had them spread around more. But um, here's a little better example of a theropod track. There's dozens of tracks just in this one little area we have cleaned off, but um, these are some of the best examples where you can see them together. Well, that's really amazing what so you we can have learn. A right, a left, plus the front footprints. A lot of times you don't see the front footprints because they either step on their front footprints or they push the mud up into them and obliterate them or partly obliterate them. You might just see a little crescent or. But in this case, he's putting his front footprint out far enough where you can see the entire front footprint, or manis print. Well, that's really interesting what you can learn, not just from the footprints, but from the entire trackways. And I've been talking with Glenn Kuban, one of the world experts in the dinosaur footprints of the Paluxy Riverbed in Texas.